Lord Watson, particularly with his reference to language, because I remember being told by a Department of State in London when I was a member of Parliament that I could, of course, uh, uh, produce a document in Welsh, but it would take two or three weeks for them to translate it if they were going to give any attention to it. Yeah. These things happen all around the world, I fear. My Lords, I believe that the advice given by the voters in June's referendum represents a disastrous course for the UK and one which people will, in time, come to bitterly regret. My party, Plaid Cymru, wants to see Wales and Britain remain in the EU. And if that's now impossible, then to secure as open a settlement as is possible with our EU partners. Plaid's three MPs voted against the bill because of the government's stance in backing the hardest of hard Brexits. Had a single market or customs union linkage been accepted by the government, we wouldn't have opposed the bill. But the government rejected such amendments. Let's, let's never forget why European countries came together after World War II. To make it impossible to go to war against each other ever again. And since 1945, we've enjoyed over 70 years of peace. The longest and broken period of peace in 400 years. I trust that this House won't be rushed into taking decisions against its better judgment on the basis of an arbitrary timetable imposed by a Prime Minister who seems to be running scared of scrutiny. Let's remember, lack of scrutiny was evident in the funding claims made by the Brexiteers. People were told downright lies about the funding consequences that would arise by leaving the EU. In Wales, we are £245 million a year net beneficiaries from the EU, the gross figure is some £650 million, as the noble Lord Lord Thomas mentioned earlier. EU structural funds have underpinned dozens of local economic projects. People in Wales's old industrial areas voted out because they were told that every penny of EU funding would be replaced by the Treasury, but amendments to that end were rejected by the government. Last June, people voted out for many reasons. We were repeatedly told by Brexiteers that we could continue to cooperate with EU countries on key issues, including security and migration, and maintain close trading links with Europe. Half a dozen models were advocated by various parts of the rag, tag and bobtail amalgam which constituted the Brexit campaign. Individuals knew what they were voting against. Farmers voted against Brussels bureaucracy. Fishing communities against overfishing by continental vessels. Small business owners voted against overregulation, and some objected to European courts. Only a minority of such people were motivated by immigration issues. And I just can't accept that 90% of those who voted out did so to block immigration. If I'm right, then the mandate to leave the EU isn't a mandate to halt the free movement of people and thereby block UK citizens from working, studying or retiring in other EU countries. Nor is it a mandate to block EU citizens from coming to work or study in Britain. Yes, let's negotiate controls to prevent abuse of our health service or social security provisions. But let's remember that UK citizens also move to France to benefit from French health care provisions. Present uncertainties are undermining a million UK citizens living in other EU countries or who have bought continental property ready for their retirement. The threat felt by EU citizens working in Britain, in the NHS, university research, tourism and food processing is an appalling byproduct of the Brexit campaign which at its worst has stimulated odious racist campaigns. Now this has to stop, it has to stop now. The government has to flag up that absolute control over EU citizens working in Britain is not fundamental to its negotiating position. From a Welsh perspective, two-thirds of our manufacturing exports go to EU countries. Companies such as Ford's, Airbus, Siemens and Toyota would be hard hit by tariff barriers. 200 American companies and 50 Japanese companies are located in Wales in order to sell to EU markets. That strategic element of government industrial policy in Wales will be undermined by a hard Brexit. Our agricultural sector faces similar challenges. Over 90% of beef and sheep meat exports go to EU markets. Any tariff, tariff barriers would be a kiss of death to rural Wales. Wales, my lords, needs unfettered access to the single market. That's the basis of the excellent white paper produced by the Welsh Government and Plaid Cymru 
in cooperation and with Liberal Democrat support. Entitled Securing Wales's Future, it calls for full single market participation. I know from earlier comments by Lord Bridges that the Minister is seriously considering the approach taken by Carolyn Jones and Leanne Wood, and I urge the Government to accept amendments to that end and to work closely with the devolved administrations. This constructive approach might also offer a formula relevant to both Scotland and Ireland. The challenge we face in relation to Ireland has within it the seeds not only of destroying the Good Friday Agreement, but also has the potential of dismantling the United Kingdom. Finally, how any final uh, negotiated agreement will be ratified is a basic question. It's the perceived will of the people that is driving us towards the cliff edge now, so it's the people who should be allowed to ratify the government's negotiated outcome. And one final question. Does the government accept the recent legal opinion, which I have a copy of here, by Sir David Edward QC and others, that there is no agreement, agreement with our EU partners? If there is no agreement, then Article 50, subsection 3, would not automatically bring to an end the UK's membership of the EU. I appeal to the government to be more flexible and to step back from the mindless threats against this chamber. As a revising chamber, our role is to propose those changes which, in all conscience, we deem necessary. If we can't change a dot or a comma in such a major bill, can we justify, just, justly ask what's the point of having such an impotent chamber? But much more important than the future of this um, chamber is the future of the nations of these islands and of Europe itself. And it's for that reason that I cannot support this bill in its present form.